It's time for Where You Live with Gene and Tony, the show that's all about owning, buying, selling, renting, and association management. If it involves a home, we'll talk about it. Here's your chance to get your homeowner questions answered. From the Concierge Landscape Studios, here's Gene and Tony. Need the shelter of someone's arms, and there you were. Needed someone to understand my ups and downs, and there you were. Welcome to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. I'm Gene Sullivan. And I'm Tony Crockett. Glad to be here today. Oh, it is. You know, this has been a great week. Tony, every once in a while, we uh, uh, get a, a special note from a client, from someone else. <laughs> it, I, it just makes my day. You got a nice compliment today. Yeah, I, I, I got a, a great compliment, and uh, it's about one of our property managers. Yeah. Okay? And uh, when someone takes the time to write that, I just think that that's great. Uh-huh. But this is a little bit unique. This person says, uh, hi, Gene. I'm going to be moving into a new property. Uh, in Lakeville, one that uh, we uh, we manage. And I just want to let you know how helpful and informative and great service that was given to me by John Westby, uh, one of our yes, property managers. Yes. John Westby is critical in my decision to purchase a property <laughs> in that community. <laughs> He is most knowledgeable and most helpful. Wow. What? Boy, as our employer, you got to love hearing that. Huh, oh, Gene? yeah. When when, yeah. when someone goes as far as say, you know, the decision for buying into an association was because of this guy right yeah. here. Yeah. And John is a great property he manager. Yes. Uh, and we, we, we hear nice things from from folks weekend yeah. and, uh, and, yeah. and week out. It's just really But you're cool. right. We don't hear this very often that someone based their purchase decision on the fact that they had a good experience with the property and thought manager. That, you know, that means things are going to be, uh, are going to be run well, yep. you know, with yep. uh, the association. Yep. And we're going to be talking about that uh, today, folks, uh, on uh, the show. Uh, we are going to be a little bit later on talking about uh, what are two of the most uh, critical items that board members need to keep in the forefront of their mind to be able to be successful in running their association. And uh, we'll be talking about that. Uh, We are also going to be uh, talking uh, about a story about a man who uh, is 80 years old and was put in jail uh, because uh, he stood in the way of his homeowners association uh, who wanted to get rid of some bushes out at the property. And we're going to be uh, talking about that in just uh, a few minutes. But I'd like to let our listeners know that we, of course, are broadcasting from the Concierge Landscape Studios. We're brought to you this hour by Extreme Exteriors and American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency. And now, without further ado, let's begin with property management in the news. Property Management in the News is brought to you by Pest Control Services. When you need to get rid of unwanted pests in your home or rental property, call someone who is responsive, professional, and a proud member of Angie's List. Give owner Greg Keener a call at 952-894-9748, Pest Control Services. Well, let's uh, begin with our uh, first uh, story, and this is coming out of uh, Florida, uh, a bucolic uh, little place called, that's right, Green Acres. <laughs> Green Acres is the place to be. That's right. So there really is a place called Green Acres, Florida. Yes. And uh, uh, you got you got to believe that uh, if there's a place to own a home in a homeowners association, it would be Green Acres, <laughs> Florida. Because as the song say says, it's the place to be. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Uh, but uh, not for one uh, homeowner. We uh, were scheduled to have uh, Mr. John Buckholz, who's the homeowner, uh, in uh, this uh, association where there was... Uh, uh, this disagreement 
unfortunately, because this is so new and this is something that's going to be... Well, the legal action's still pending, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, and so because of that, uh, his lawyer said, uh, why don't we just wait and... Uh, and uh, Eric, turn your face, please. Thank you. Uh, our, Eric's making our, faces he's at making, you, isn't he? He's making faces, and it's not fair, He's trying to make you laugh. Tony, yeah, that, no, yes, no, he does. that's not fair. So this story came out of Green Acres, Florida. John and Pat Buckles love nature, it says. Yes, uh, they did. And um, the issue uh, that took place is that uh, for a number of years, the Buckles have been in a disagreement with the association uh, over the the planting of uh, some bushes uh, along the fence line at the back of the property, you know, and it's more he was planting wildflowers. I begin, I believe, which really looked like weeds to a lot of people. Prairie grass is wildflowers, oh, I see. so it was okay. more than just bushes. Yes, and so it was not as well of a uh, well kept, trimmed. It wasn't. Look. A, it wasn't supposed to be a groomed look. Yes, yeah. and and apparently that's what uh, the association has in their architectural control. But for years they've been going back and forth uh, about this. It came uh, to a head about mm-hmm. a week ago. Uh, the uh, property management company apparently sent out letters to uh, the Buckholes as well as to other members uh, in the community living on this block saying that, you know, on uh, this date, uh, we're going to have someone come and remove those bushes because we just want to have uh, a a lawn in, yeah. in back by the yeah. fence. So they got a notice from the Cloisters Property Owners Association saying they had to remove the plants. Yes, and then what ended up happening was that Mr. Uh, Buckholz, it says in uh, this uh, news story, uh, he stood out and uh, stood between uh, the landscaping that in question to be removed and uh, the company that was there to do it. And uh, he said, this is where you stop. And apparently he had in his hands, uh, he was armed with shovels when approached by uh, uh, the folks that were coming in to uh, remove these plantings. Now, um, Again, you know, as we always comment, you never know, according to the news story, uh, what was really taking place. You just don't get all the information. Sometimes they they just kind of hype things up sure. to to make it more interesting. Sure. But when they said when and when they say that he was armed with a shovel, what do they mean? Uh, if we're talking about a man who is just. Uh, holding the top of a shovel and the spade end is on the ground. He's got his foot on it. It's kind of leaning and people sure. come in. Sure, I don't know if that's armed with a shovel. Uh, I'm thinking, it, does he is he holding it like a baseball bat? Is he brandishing this? And shovel. brandishing yeah. it? Yeah. That would be an issue. So but, he was he was he was holding his ground to try and protect his wildflowers from the landscaping crew that was had been hired by the association to rip them out. Yes, and uh, and so uh, because. Uh, and so uh, he continued on, uh, apparently, and uh, and like most people in an association, when uh, they get between uh, a worker, a contractor, yeah. who was sent out of the property just to do a job, yeah, and they're being prevented, vendors and contractors, uh, 99% of the time are great. They are diplomatic. That's right. They hold back. They're not going to push forward. And this company did the same thing, That's too. That's what it sounds like. And so the police were but called. But the property manager called the police. Property yeah. manager called uh, the police. Uh, it seems that Mr. Buckles kind of uh, uh, ratcheted things up a little bit. It says that he cracked a joke. But uh, the joke he cracked to the police was, you might want to call for backup. <laughs> <laughs> because I've been trained in karate. In karate. Now, so what was the result of that after that comment? Um, Mr. Buckhouse was they placed, called for backup. They, yeah, they, yeah, they did yeah. call they for took backup. That as You're a threat. right. Yeah, and uh, he was finally placed in handcuffs, charged with disorderly conduct and resisting arrest, but without violence. Now, the interesting thing is, if you were to read. Uh, the story and the person who wrote it, they said Mr. Buckhole's uh, passion for plants led him into handcuffs. <laughs> I, 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 w- I would say to you, it sounds like 
it was not his passion for plants, but it was for disorderly conduct mm. and resisting arrest mm-hmm. that uh, caused the police to say, yeah. we're going to have to put you in handcuffs. Yeah. And that's, and, uh, that's uh, unfortunate. And more unfortunate, it escalated beyond that because he became ill sitting in the back of the police car. So it got very ratcheted up. Yeah, it did. An yeah. un- unfortunate thing uh, was that, uh, you're right, they put him in the car and it was probably a hot, it said it was a hot day. Yeah. He was feeling very uncomfortable, laid down. Next thing yeah. you know, he was in an ambulance. Yeah. Uh, he was released. Now he's all right. He's we all right. We thought he was all right. Yeah. And uh, we wish we could have uh, talked to him today, but we've got a lot more that we want to say about this, but we're going to take a break right okay. now. And when we come back, we'll uh, talk about uh, the uh, man who resisted arrest over bushes and plantings. Butterfly, spend- 